This is the shocking and bizarre case of Lori Vallows and her two missing children. In November 2019, Kay and Larry Woodcock of Louisiana, make a call to Rexburg Police Department. They haven't been able to contact their seven-year-old grandson JJ for nearly two months and they are concerned. The police conduct a welfare check, they find no sign of the grandson, his 17-year-old sister or indeed their mother. The police do however, suspect that the mother has left in a hurry. The Woodcocks are deeply worried, their grandson JJ has autism. The police find his medication and see that it hasn't been used recently. JJ's sister is Tylee, they have an older brother called Colby but he doesn't reside with the family. The last contact he had was with Tylee back in August. Rexburg police begin to investigate the odd circumstances, they discover the children's mother, Lori had moved to Idaho from Arizona in late August 2019. Lori's ex-husband Charles Vallows, had been shot and killed in July 2019, following an altercation between him and Lori over custody of their son JJ. The situation became heated, Lori's brother, Alex Cox claimed Charles attacked him with a baseball bat resulting in Cox fatally shooting Charles twice in the chest. You know, what happened today though? Like just in the last 20 just, minutes? He came, to, he came at me with a bat. Okay, he was he living here or no. visiting? He came to pick up his son. Okay, is the son inside? No, my sister took him to school. Okay, so it was just you at the house? Yes. And he came, how long, what time did he come to pick up, pick up the son? Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago maybe. Okay. So, you know who he is, let him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I think they were talking earlier, then she left, and then he got into it with me. Right. Okay, so you're over here visiting your sister and yes. your niece. Yes. Okay, and there was a tussle between your sister and her husband. Yes. And does the husband live here or no? No. He okay. Okay, is he an ex-husband or just current husband? Uh, it's, they're working on that. Gotcha. So at some point earlier today, they get into a some type of domestic? Yeah, just this morning, then they left, and then he came at me. They left meaning who? Both my, of parties? My, or? Yeah, my sister took my niece's face from him and then he came to me. Okay, but did he leave also? No. He stayed here? He stayed. So you guys are kind of talking in between or what? So you both, so you get in an argument, what is it over? Well, it was over my sister. He was he was uh, getting physical with her and so my niece came out with her bat and then he took the bat away from her. Wait a minute, I thought you said your niece left. She did, but this is before. Okay, so before, before your... Uh, your sister and your niece left. Yeah. At some point, uh, your sister and her husband are arguing. Yes. Verbal argument. And then your niece pulls out a bat? Well, it wasn't verbal. He was getting close and she came out to defend my sister with her bat. Your niece? Yes. Okay. And then she poked at him and he took it away. Okay. And then I, I stepped in and told my niece to separate. Right. So then my sister leaves with my niece. Okay, so not, not, not terribly not, long. No, no, no. Oh, okay. And then, uh, and then he's he's coming back at me, and he's still got the bat in his hand. Like, what are you doing? And where are you at? It. Where are we you were both? We're in the at? living room. Okay. And then I turned around, and he hit me in the back of the head with the bat. So I went to my room and got my gun. I so. Carry it. You went to your room, meaning yeah, the room you're staying, staying in? Yeah. Okay, and you brought your uh, brought a gun yes. with you? Yes. Do you always yes. bring a gun? I have a concealed carry, always. Okay. Just to be safe. Hi, who are, are you? Okay, just stand over there for just a second, guys. And then, uh, I told him to put the bat down, and he wouldn't, and he came at me again. And the wife just showed up as well. So you told him to put the... Yes. So where are you at? Back and off. Where, where are you at now? Or did you stay in your bedroom? No. Okay, why didn't you stay just in your bedroom and close the door? Is that something you didn't think no, about? or? it didn't even occur to me. Okay, so walk me through it. So you go back into your room. So I, just, I just went back to the living room. I'm like, what is your problem? With the gun again. Yes. Room. And I said, I want you to put that bat down. And he wouldn't do it. And he's like, you? and he came at me with the bat again after he'd already hit me in the head. So I shot him to stop him. Okay, and then what happened? That was it. Then this is Lori. After arriving on scene, for someone whose ex-husband has just been murdered, she seems awfully calm and happy. How long have you lived here? Like three weeks. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. That's why the neighbors don't know us. Gotcha. <laughs> like, hi, neighbor, sorry. 
Charles had two sons from his previous marriage, Lori informed them of their father's death via text message. Withholding the vital information about his manner of death, Lori nor JJ, attended Charles's memorial service. In fact, the day of his shooting, neighbors witnessed Lori having a pool party. Everything about Charles's death seemed odd, Charles was a former baseball player, if he had intended to hurt Alex Cox he had the skills to do so and the physical stature. Even the police officer on scene, quizzed Alex as to why he just didn't shut himself in his room. There seems no viable explanation for Alex shooting Charles twice in the chest and for Lori to conveniently leave the crime scene as to avoid implicating herself. Charles had court documents expressing his fear for his life at the hands of Lori. Charles's first wife Cheryl Wheeler, told the media that he had never been physically violent towards Lori and he loved his son JJ dearly. The day the incident occurred, Charles had arrived at the home to take JJ to school. Lori had the perfect scenario to have Charles murdered with her brother, Alex as the patsy. Chandler Police Department did not find any criminal wrongdoing and Cox did not face charges as it was deemed to be self-defense. However, when news broke that Lori's children were missing, Chandler PD reopened the case. They did not name a suspect but were investigating a criminal conspiracy to commit homicide. Following Charles's death, Lori contacted the company in which JJ had been provided a service dog from. The dog had been trained to help JJ with his sleep problems. She requested that the dog be rehomed, much to the dismay of the dog trainer who felt JJ would need the support dog more so following the death of his father. Lori insisted that a change of circumstances made it impossible to keep the dog. Bailey was eventually rehomed with another family. Charles and Lori had begun divorce proceedings in February 2019, Charles wanted custody of JJ, the child he and Lori had adopted as a baby. In court documents, Charles aired his concerns that Lori would kill him, he took out a protection order. He claims Lori had developed weird cult-like beliefs, she called herself a god who was in charge of saving 144,000 people when the second coming arrives in July 2020. Charles had even removed Lori and JJ as beneficiaries of his life insurance and made his sister K, sole beneficiary. Charles Vallow was Lori's fourth husband, they were married in 2006. They adopted JJ in 2014, he is the biological grandson of Charles's sister Kay. Joseph Ryan is Lori's third husband, they married in 2001 and divorced three years later, they have Tylee together. Lori's second husband is William Lay Joya, they married in 1995 and separated a year later, they have Colby together. The identity of Lori's first husband is unknown. Joseph Ryan died in 2018 of natural causes. Charles Vallow was murdered in 2019. As the investigators delve deeper, things just get stranger. Lori, 46, had just got married to husband number 5. Her children haven't been seen since September 2019 but Lori flew out to Hawaii to get married to Chad Daybell, 51 in November 2019. What appears even stranger is that Chad had become a widower less than a month before his marriage. Chad and Tammy had married in 1990, had five children and founded a publishing company. They had moved to Idaho in 2015. Chad, a member of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, used his publishing company to publish many books on his religious beliefs. Tammy, was found dead in what appeared to be natural causes. The family refused an autopsy and she was buried. Lori and Chad, seemed to have been acquainted since 2018 they appeared on a religious podcast together in December 2018 and both shared doomsday beliefs. December 1st. 2019 police discover that Lori and Chad flew out to Hawaii together, the children were not with them. With suspicion growing, 
police exhume Tammy Day Bell's body, the results of the autopsy are not made public. December 12, Lori's brother Alex Cox is found unconscious, despite medical attention he dies. Five days before Christmas, an appeal is made for Tylee and JJ. JJ's grandparents offer a reward of $20,000 for information. Meanwhile, Lori and Chad are renting a place in Hawaii and refusing to provide any information regarding Tylee and JJ. Colby even reaches out on YouTube, making a video pleading with his mother to let everyone know where the kids are. Investigators discover that Lori rented a storage unit in October 2019, CCTV footage shows Lori visiting the unit several times with a man suspected to be Alex Cox. They are seen moving various goods, the police search the unit and find children's toys, a bicycle, and various items relating to Tylee and JJ. Neighbors of the Vallos, provide CCTV footage of JJ playing in the grass near the rented home, this is September 2019. A nanny Lori had hired tells her she doesn't need her services anymore. September 23rd and JJ is last seen at Kennedy Elementary School, the following day Lori contacted the school to say JJ is going to be homeschooled. Tylee hasn't been seen since September 8th, she was photographed during a family trip to Yellowstone Park with Lori, Alex, and JJ. The photo was found by police when they searched Lori's cloud data. Lori's niece Melanie Pawlowski's ex-husband Brandon Boudreaux, tells the press that back in October his car had been struck by a bullet whilst he was in it on his driveway, he calls police and tells them that someone shot at him through the rear window of a jeep, that jeep is registered to Charles Vallow. Even stranger is, Chad Daybell's wife Tammy, had called the police a week later to report a masked man had shot at her with what appeared to be a paintball gun. She was unhurt but shaken and clueless to the motive. Eerily Tammy was also on her driveway and unloading her vehicle when approached, although the person shot at her, she says the gun didn't appear to be loaded. It was dismissed as a prank. Brandon Boudreaux was also in a bitter custody battle with Melanie, much like Charles Vallow, he too cites concerns that his wife is affiliated with a cult-like movement and he is concerned for his safety, he even claims that Melanie knows the whereabouts of Tylee and JJ. Melani was later questioned by police and denied any knowledge of the children's whereabouts. January 2020 and the case has now gained the interest of the FBI, they search Chad Daybell's home and seize over 43 items belonging to him and Tammy. Lori is located in Hawaii and served with an order that she must physically produce Tylee and JJ to the authorities within five days to prove they are safe and well. A search warrant is carried out on their rental property, no sign of the children is found, there are no beds for the children, belongings, or any proof they have been with Lori. Tylee's phone is found in Lori's possession, the last message sent from the phone was October 25th. Hi. Miss you guys too, love ye. The other person replies saying it didn't sound like her. Lori misses the five-day deadline to prove Tylee and JJ are safe. She is arrested on the following charges. Felony desertion, non-support of dependent children, resisting or obstructing a police officer, criminal solicitation to commit crime and contempt of court. In an unusual move, bail was set at $5 million, despite Lori's lawyer trying to claim that this amount is unprecedented the judge maintained it meaning, Lori would be held in jail. Furthermore, she is to be expedited to Idaho to face charges there. Chad Daybell was not arrested, he continues to support Lori. Lori has failed to provide any information as to the whereabouts of her children, leaving JJ's grandparents heartbroken and Colby distraught. Police have searched various locations as to where the children were last seen, searches of Yellowstone have been hindered by the weather conditions. All that is known is that Lori has connections to a belief system that is a little peculiar. 
Chad was affiliated with the Latter Day Saints but they have since denounced any association with him following Lori's arrest. The podcast that both Lori and Chad appeared on together have been forced to release a statement denying all allegations of being a cult and damning Lori's actions. It's only the now deceased, Charles Vallow's testimony that provides a hint of what has been going on in Lori's mind. He was concerned enough to want custody of JJ, even if he was embellishing issues like many do in custody battles, the fact Lori appeared on a podcast with Chad gives credit to his claims. But the question everyone is pondering, what has Lori done with her children, most hope they are hidden away with a cult somewhere as the other option isn't something anyone wants to consider, could Lori have harmed her children? Lori's life has been turbulent to say the least, Lori, JJ and Tylee were at the house when Charles was shot and killed, although they did not witness the incident it was bound to have had an emotional impact. A neighbor in Idaho, watched JJ dump his toys in a puddle as Tylee watched him. She thought it was strange. Lori rented a home in Idaho, but less than a month after moving in, both her children vanish. She got rid of JJ's support dog. Was she planning this all along? Did she want the children out the way so she could be with Chad? He is also a questionable character, how has Lori explained the disappearance of her children to him? She told one neighbor the children had gone to stay with their grandparents but when police began to investigate, both Lori and Chad fled to Hawaii. What has Lori told investigators? How can she justify her complete ambivalence to her children's well-being? Chad had the couple's belongings packed up and heads to the airport to take a flight back to Idaho, as reporters hound him, he tells them the children are safe but refuses to elaborate. Investigators have uncovered an email allegedly sent by Charles Vallows to Chad, asking if he would help publish a book about his beliefs. Investigators believe that Lori was the author of the email not Charles. Although Charles was a member of the Latter-day Saints, according to his sister, Kay, he only joined to support his then-wife Lori. Kay goes on to explain that it was only over the past 18 months that Lori became affiliated with a religious group she refers to as a cult. That her behavior began to change, leading to the breakdown of her marriage with Charles and ultimately, his death. Lori had begun participating heavily with a group, helping to prepare the people of this earth for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Appearing on their podcasts, Chad was also associated with this group. The group hold events called Preparing a People. They deny to being a member of a specific denomination and claim to welcome all speakers to their events. There are known groups that have remodeled the Church of the Latter-day Saints teachings to their own division. Some groups push the idea that the end times are coming and encourage followers to hoard supplies for the impending doom. Chad himself, wrote several books claiming to have a foreboding of a doomsday event. It is rumored that Lori met Chad through this network culminating into an affair and two deceased former spouses. In fact, Tammy and Chad were not separated at the time of her death, leading to more speculation that infidelity had occurred between Chad and Lori. Chad had allegedly told people he had a premonition of Tammy's death. Could Chad be the one who has led Lori down a dark path? Is he the cult leader? As Lori faces charges in Rexburg, Idaho, her lawyer released a statement. Lori, Vallow. Day Bell is a devoted mother and resents assertions to the contrary. We look forward to addressing the allegations once they have moved beyond speculation and rumor. To be continued.